Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey, everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and at the end of this um, at the end of this video, I'm going to read an article for you that was put out in 2016 and immediately taken down. And I've, I don't think I've ever read it on this channel before. Some other people probably have shown it before. There's a lot of new people. Well, first of all, there's a lot going on in the world right now. And there's a lot of new people coming into this space. And, I, and I'm not saying I believe all of the things in the letter, but I do believe a lot of the things in the letter. It's not a letter. It's, a, it's an article that was written or like a blog entry. But you, and, and it has to do with the Rothschilds, and you're not going to want to miss this. Uh, but let's start off here with Chinu Patel at Chinu Patel 29. From Cryptopolis, U.S. stocks halted. Now, I've been watching the start, stock market all day long, and this market has gone down over 2,000 points at one time. And they put the, the uh, what do they call them, the curbs in or the, the, the stop. They stopped the market, and they have all kinds of rules where they can stop the market if it gets too ugly. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this got very ugly heading into about 4 o'clock. Um, but anyway, this is something that Cryptopolis and Brad Collins were talking about the other day, actually, on one of their channels. <clears throat> but anyway, very scary things going on in the stock market right now. But hey, who couldn't have seen this coming? We've been talking about this for almost two years now on this channel. Of course, this stock market was going to collapse. And, you know, the, word, the thing we can't talk about on here, um, to me, that's just something that um, who knows? Who knows if that's like a real thing or not? I don't know. I mean, maybe it is a maybe it is as legitimate as they say, but it sure seems like a timely thing with all that's going on, especially with this being the year of the digital asset. Um, but move, look, moving along, Cryptopolis, he's all over this this stock market right, right now. Breaking Trump economic team drafting options for economic stimulus today. Stock market is not allowed to go down for um, over two or three days without the government stepping in. And then this from X Men XRP um, New York Fed raises size of repo operations for this week. Um, and this is, let's see, announced Monday that it would increase its daily overnight repo operations to at least 150 billion from 100 billion in the first four days of the week. They also said. They would increase the amount of the longer two-week repo operations on Tuesday and Thursday to $45 billion from $20 billion. In other words, the governments of the world are completely losing control of everything. But as I've been telling you in my videos for the last few weeks, I believe that they've planned for this all along. And I believe Ripple and XRP are parts of what the plan is. Um, then Go Crypto put out an interesting tweet. BTC makes you go, hmm, Trump, no love for Bitcoin. Lagarde, BTC is not the one. They both said those things. Trillion dollar man, sell all your BTC. I think that's David Schwartz. He's been basically saying, he's been basically kind of bashing um, XR, or not XRP, but Bitcoin over the last couple of weeks. Now the Bank of England governor, Bitcoin, be prepared to lose all your money. Warren Buffett, BTC rat poison. What do they know that we don't? Now, before you chew me a new whatever, I also want to add, watch what they do, not what they say. It is perplexing, to say the least, to see billion-dollar companies throw truckloads of money at Bitcoin. Slow and old tech, like I said, makes you go, hmm, I agree with that. Um, XRP Bart showed me this. The liquidity flows are going up again. Liquidity index for coins.ph on XRP slash PHP 28 day moving trend um, today so far 7.4 million all time high 7.2 million. So there you go, folks. And then there was this from Ian Northing. <laughs> now listen, uh, listen to this very closely. This for those of you that don't know, 
the, remember the financial crisis, the problems was liquidity, everything locked up. This is when Brad Garlinghouse was in, was in the room with Christine Lagarde, who at the time was heading the IMF, and a, and a whole room full of central bankers in Switzerland. Um, listen to what this, this guy's asking Brad Garlinghouse a question. And, and Brad, this is an honest question. Um, Ripple is, one of your products is to distribute liquidity through the payments system. So the question is, could there be a run on Ripple? In other words, everybody wants your liquidity. Nobody wants to provide it because there is a scenario where people develop doubts for right. good reasons or bad about the system. The question Now, when I was in sales, I learned that when people ask you questions, if you're selling someone a product and they ask you questions, that means they're interested in the product. You just have to satisfy the questions. When I see, I'm assuming this guy is one of the many central bankers or finance ministers in the room. When I heard this question, what's what the bells are going off in my head and I'm saying to myself, well, so here we got a room full of central bankers that are asking Brad Garlinghouse these questions because they want to buy his product. They just need to be satisfied on the questions. <laughs> and that's what I saw right there. I believe Brad Garlinghouse was in that room to make these central bankers understand that XRP could help in a liquidity crisis. Just like what we saw from Chris Larson on stage at the Money 2020. I retweeted it. Go look at my tweet. I retweeted it today. I've shown you the video before where Chris Larson says in, in the financial crisis, we didn't have a real solution, but now he thinks XRP could be used as a solution in a liquidity crisis in, a, in another global uh, financial crisis. So there you go. All right. And then next, uh, my official neighbor, he's the official neighbor of the Digital Asset Investor Channel, sent me this. Now listen to this. I went to the second part of it. The video, the sound quality is terrible. So I'll kind of tell you what he says after he says it, just in case you can't hear it. He's advocated an electric uh, currency, electronic cash or something like that, so that we could, they could put money in, in people's pockets, <laughs> probably with the push of a button. How about that? Anyway, this stuff doesn't come out of nowhere. Now, this guy, let me see if I follow this guy, dude. He's, he's called Bud Fox 999 which is from Wall Street, the movie. Cash is dead. Behold the digital revolution. Now, I'm just going to say something. You know that the current events that are going on, and there's a word that I'm not allowed to say that has to do with the current events going on around the world. Well, I am Legion tweeted it out, and I don't even think I can show the word on the screen, so I won't. But he tweeted out something from Iran, where Iran is wanting their people to stop using cash and use QR codes. What uses QR codes, folks? Digital freaking currencies. Coincidence? I don't know. All right. Ian Northing, this is what he, Ian Northing is the person that sent me this letter. Now, I saw this letter back in, not letter, but it's a blog entry, I believe, back in 2018, I think I saw it. Never did talk about it. But like I told you, I've come a long way in what I believe, in, in how big I believe all this is in the last couple of years. So I'm going to read you the parts of this I feel like I can read you. Open your ears very, very well, folks, because you need to listen to what I'm about to read to you, okay? This is a big deal, okay? Now, I want to give a couple of caveats. The first is, I don't know who's covered this before. I have no idea. Um, and the second is, is that I'm not, I'm not reading this and telling you I believe every word. I'm telling you I believe a lot of the words, but not every word, okay? And I'll try to point out some of the things I do agree with. Okay, here we go. This article, the title of it is, The Days of the Petrodollar Are Numbered. Rothschild scuttles it with Ripple for his one world currency. The SDR, IMF, coming world central bank. According to experts, 
New financial technologies and payment systems threaten the global dominance of the U.S. dollar in international payments. The financial blog Sovereign Man reports these allowed transfers between two parties directly directly bypass the U.S. financial system and the dollar. To date, practically all transactions were conducted worldwide through dollar accounts at U.S. banks. New innovative payment systems such as Ripple, based on the blockchain technology, begin to establish themselves as alternatives. Ripple, whose investors are CME, Andries and Horowitz, Google Ventures, an arm of Google's Alphabet, Inc., where Edmund de Rothschild is a shareholder. Alphabet makes up about 11 point. And by, by the way, folks, this article is from 2016. This isn't somebody that wrote this yesterday. 2016. Edmund de, de Rothschild is a shareholder in Google's Alphabet, Inc. Alphabet makes up about 11.4% of Ed, Edmund de Rothschild Italia SGR SPA's investment portfolio, making the stock its third largest position. Edmund de Rothschild Italia SGR SPA's holdings in Alphabet were worth $8.8 uh, $8 million or so at the end of the most recent reporting period. I will also point out on the, on the I showed you last week, on the uh, steering committee of the Bilderberg Group is Eric uh, Schmidt, the guy that one of the founders of Google, just as a side note. Um, Ripple offers the possibility of direct international transfers, a method that makes the dollar simply super superfluous. See the feature above. All, although the use of the alternative payment system is in its infancy, it already works. This was in 2016, remember. Two months ago, a Canadian bank had made the first payment with the Ripple protocol to Germany. The Swiss bank, UBS, and Deutsche Bank joined forces in developing a new cyber currency. The system promoted by the Swiss bank could come on, market, on the market in co consultation with Rothschild's central banks and Rothschild's BIS regulators. Simon Black of Sovereign Man argues that the often ruthless economic and geopolitics of the United States is expected to increase the incentive of other countries and banks looking for alternatives. They have abused the trust and confidence which was put into it by the rest of the world by amassing debt in huge extent, waging wars in other countries, and having dropped remote control bombs on hospitals. It also points to the example of French bank BNP Paribas, which had to pay $9 billion to U.S. authorities. Furthermore, the CME owns the Dow Jones, IDG Capital, which is a Ripple investor, I believe, China Funded, and Santander of the Rothschilds and a member of the Inter Alpha Group are further Ripple investors. About the Inter Alpha Group, the advisor wrote on 27th September 2011, um, the group was founded by Lord Jacob Rothschild in 1971 at the exact time that Richard Nixon took the gold off the U.S. dollar and ended the Bretton Woods system of protection with fixed exchange rate. The U.S. Gold Commission in 1982 reported to President Reagan, quote, the U.S. Treasury owned no gold at all. All the gold was, that was left in Fort Knox was now owned by the Federal Reserve, a group of private bankers, as collateral against the national debt. Most of the $35 trillion of taxpayer-funded bailout money worldwide Crisis 2008 has gone to the Rothschilds, Inter Alpha and private banks, the City of London, the EU Inter Alpha control 70% of the world's finance. Rothschilds also make up the seven private banks known as the Federal Reserve Bank of America, formed in 1913. Rothschilds, Banks of London, Berlin, Lazard Banks, Bank of Paris, Israel Moses Syaf Bank of Italy, Warburg Bank, Warburg Bank of Hamburg, and Amsterdam, Kuhn, Low uh, Bank of New York, Chase Manhattan, Bank of New York, and Goldman. Bank of New York is now BNY Mellon, folks, and Goldman Sachs Bank of New York. These banks are a private credit monopoly which has preyed upon the people of the United Now, look, this is the part. I don't know about all this stuff, folks. I'm just telling you, a lot of these connections, there's something to a lot of the things in this. I'm not saying that, that the people involved are a bunch of bad guys and all that. I'm just saying that they are probably what they consider to be for the good of humanity are working on some of these things and that 
XRP as an as a global reserve digital asset is a part of solving a major problem, as Brad Garling has said. But anyway, I'm going to keep going. Um, and now they intend to hold the world. Let's see. Um, I'm keeping going here. Uh, this is this and this. China's um, it says China's new development bank, the AIIB, seeks cooperation with Rothschild's World Bank and IMF and is welcome. Um, among among the Ripple banker pioneers mentioned above are Rothschild banks. As I re recently wrote, this is a paradox because the, the Rothschilds have bloodily staked stake in on keeping this Fed's monopoly to print U.S. dollars. Rothschild knows the weakening of the petrodollar means the fall of the U.S. superpower status, its loss of always enough short-term short -term credit to fund its army, navy, and air force in perpetual wars enriching Rothschild's other money machine, the military-industrial complex. It will mean the collapse of the dollar and probably war against the other saboteur of the petrodollar, Russia, who is abandoning her Rothschild Central Bank and her dollar dependency. So what is the reason for Rothschild shooting himself in the foot? Let me see if I can get back to the next. Um, okay. As I wrote already in 2010, Rothschild's IMF has the follower of the uh, the dollar all the dollar already the coming one world currency the SDR of the IMF the notes and coins they are being abolished once more Rothschild's central banks just discussed to abolish cash as a meeting in the US and replace with an electronic currency that would also mean the death of the petrodollar at the same time Rothschild Rothschild agent Soros is scuttling the EU and the Euro since Germany would not pay for their demanded fiscal union. Um, let's see, the Rothschild, uh, the Rothschild alternative is obviously a new global order with a new currency and central bank, the IMF and the BIS to rule them all, and a new global tax system launched and headed by the IMF. Um, and then it goes on, let's see. In my opinion, now this is where it gets kind of, you know, the, when they start talking about Illuminati, I'm just kind of like, okay, well, whatever. Um, but they do, I will read this part to you. The Illuminati are now about to implement, it's funny because my, my seven-year-old always talks about this and I've never even talked to him about it. The Illuminati are now about to implement what is planned by Joseph Stiglitz and included in 2009 UNC TAD report. Um, the IMF as the One World Rothschild Central Bank. And it's, for those of you that don't know, the Rothschilds is the wealthiest family in the history of the world, I think, more or less. And it's SDR as the one, as the only one world reserve currency. Both Russians, Chinese, probably Saudis, and the U.S. itself are giving up the petrodollar, and thus the U.S. status as world's only superpower. The Illuminati are taking over the world as planned from the beginning from their beginning here's the addendum and it says here is the plan um it says he published this okay here's i mean he actually gives you what he thinks the plan is and you just take the parts of this that you think sound reasonable i think there's a lot in what's written in all of this that's that you're seeing happen around you world governance by means of inflationary mo money production and regulation one, a key objective of regulatory reform should be the, the weeding out of the financial instruments with no social returns and providing incentives to channel resources towards investment projects with high social returns. Regulatory arbitrage can only be avoided if regulators are able to cover the whole financial system and ensure that all financial transactions are overseen. It is necessary to complement microprudential regulation with macroprudential policies aiming at smoothing the leverage cycle. The incentives of credit rating agencies could be improved by establishing a regulatory authority that supervises the operations of the agencies. Participation of developing countries in the various agencies' different regulatory requirements. The report of the Stiglitz Commission reform involving special drawing rights as the main form of inter international liquidity. Are you hearing this, folks? 
a system of managed flexible exchange rates. The Bretton Woods system and the European monetary system provide precedence. Better if countries whose currencies are under pressure to devalue or joined in their fight against speculation by the monetary authorities of those countries whose currencies were under pressure to appreciate. Example, Association of South Southeast Asian na Nations, the ASEAN, plus China, Japan, Republic of Korea, collectively managed fund that will pull the foreign exchange reserve of those countries. The gl global economic governance would gain greater coherence if multilateral trade rules were complemented by an effective system of surveillance and macroeconomic policy coordination. So far, policy surveillance by the IMF has been effective only for countries borrowing from the fund. Um, countries need to lead global action to mitigate, this is number 11, to mitigate climate change. They need to assume responsibility for the accumulation of emissions affecting the global climate, which have resulted from their past actions. If, if strengthened, many of its elements would, could contribute to the greater participation of developed countries in those efforts. That reminds me of the World Eco Economic Forum. All they talked about was climate change, remember? 12. Putting a price on emissions in, a, in the form of taxes um, or, tra or tradable emission permits could help set in motion a process towards establishing low carbon econ economies. Direct government intervention in the form of emissions uh, performance standards and strict regulations. The international community can support industrial development in this direction by allowing developing countries sufficient pol policy space in the context of relevant international agreements on climate change, trade, foreign direct investment, and intellectual property rights. Allow the banks the possibility to deposit dollar reserves in special substitution account at the IMF and to be dominated, de denominated in SDRs. The SDR could also be used to settle international payments. The SDRs could also be used to settle international payments. Um, the risk would have to be covered either through the generation um, of higher revenues by the IMF or by guarantees from member states. Enable 15, enable a new global reserve bank or a reformed IMF to issue an artificial reserve currency such as the bank core suggested by Keynes in his Bretton Woods proposals for an international clearing union. Um, the new global reserve system could be built on the existing systems of SDRs. One possibility is for the countries to agree to exchange their own currencies for the new currency so that the global currency would be backed by a basket of currencies of all the members but other variants are also discussed in the Commission's report. The new system could contain penalties against countries that maintain deficits and equally against countries that maintain surpluses. Now look at this. The new system could contain penalties against countries. Do you remember that job that the Ripple had the other day? Remember they had a job and the title in the job was like Sanctious, Sanctions Department. Remember that job title? 17. The G20 at its London summit in April 2009 announced its support for a new general SDR allocation which would inject $250 billion into the world economy and increase global liquidity. However, a major problem, the G20 proposal, is that the new SDRs are allocated among IMS various members so that the G7 countries would get over 45% of the newly allocated SDRs while less than 37% would be allocated to developing and transition economies and less than 8% to low-income countries. What I think about when I hear about this allocation is pre-allocation or earmarking XRP. Number 18, SDRs should be allocated to member states on the basis of some estimation of their demand for reserves or more generally on some judgment of need. 19, the G20 finance ministers meeting in April 2009 endorsed the proposal for a counter-cyclical issuance of SDRs if the purpose of SDR allocation is to stabilize global output growth. It would indeed be appropriate to issue more SDRs when global growth is low and smaller amounts or retire SDRs in periods of fast global and output growth. 20. 
Wage cuts have an immediate dampening effect on domestic demand and further destabilize the economy. Moreover, wage cuts and size needed to restore competitiveness of deflationary and add to the general depression of production and investment. The purpose of, the, of giving countries unconditional access to international liquidity should be to ensure the level of imports can be maintained and not bail out foreign investors. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button. Tell your friends and family to take that little blog entry for what it's worth. You, you listen to that and you just think for yourself of all the things you've seen on this channel and other channels. Which parts of that make sense? There should be a few things that wake you up in the middle of the night and make you think been right there in front of our face all along, folks. How many times have we listened? How many times have we heard Brad Garlinghouse say the new world order or or that their, their plan is to make XRP the world, a world, a global reserve currency? And Miguel Valles say in a matter of fact way that his goal is to have the liquidity of a fiat currency like the Swiss franc. How do you do that? You do that by having much larger people involved, much larger players. Thank you for listening.